Um, so what we have going on is, is always kind of been a hot topic um, for the sales guys, for performance wise, for really kind of anybody that's walked in, uh, gr the group chats, um, all of those stuff, the forums, everywhere. This has always kind of been a hot topic because it's always kind of the something that, that you guys think of first when it comes to modifications. Obviously, other than an air intake and, you know, stuff like that, but something that, you know, you want performance wise, you really want some see some some expected gains is really kind of the headers and downpipes. That's where you're really going to kind of benefit. So um, I, I'm going to get you, like I said, I'm going to get you guys pulled up here so that way we can answer some of your questions if you guys have any. Okay. So we're going to answer some of your questions if you have any and really kind of go from there. I have some examples here. I got Turbo 4 with the downpipe on it. You V6 guys, y'all have been asking for V6 stuff. I got something on the way. Okay. Just letting you guys know. All right. And obviously, you V8 guys. Well, you guys always kind of get the attention. You guys always get the attention. And we have some Cooks headers here for you. Okay, now I have this car here that obviously you guys have seen. If you kind of followed our videos and stuff like that, you see and you know that car has headers on it already. Um, so I have that as an example to show you. And like I said, I got the Turbo 4 downpipe that we'll show you here as well. And I got you pulled up. So if you guys have any questions, please pop in. And I'll be more than happy to answer them as best as I can while we're here live. Um, and, uh, you know, let's have a little bit of fun, right? Let's, let's jump right into it. So headers. What's the benefit behind a set of headers or, or a downpipe? Um, as some of you guys know, I'm going to kind of break some things down for you. Now, if we go back to 2010, okay, Camaro first came out 2010, and, or not first came out, obviously, 1967 is when they first came out, okay, I got it, but the fit gen, fit gen first came out in 2010, obviously, it hit the road with the SS and the V6 options, now, could you put a set of headers on those models, SS, yes, definitely, for sure, obviously, we have a 2010 sitting right here, and we have a set of headers on it, no problem, that was not a big deal, now, the V6, the RS, you guys, now, could you put a set of headers on a 2010, Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can put a set of long tube headers. Now, the only thing about putting a set of long tube headers on the V6 was that it only went from 2010 to 2011. 2012 to current, they changed a little bit. So that's where the downpipes come in. Okay, so that's why we're kind of going over some of the downpipe stuff as well. That's where the downpipe stuff came in. Okay, so let's go back. 2010, SS. You got the car, you got the modifications. Obviously, first thing you want on a muscle car is going to be something that's going to be make the exhaust sound aggressive, sound a little bit loud. Set of headers, right? Slap a set of headers on it and let's go down the road. No problem. No problem. Those were easy. The 2010 to 2015 models, V8s, you SS and Z01 guys, even you one LE guys, all you guys had the easy job when it came to headers. It was easy. They made good power. They fit perfectly. Absolutely no problems with a lot of set of headers. Now, there are headers out there, and I'm going to kind of pick on you guys that are kind of budget builds there are kind of headers out there that maybe they're a whole lot cheaper than what you might have seen on our website and i'll give to you yeah they are but you got to pay attention to material and longevity behind it and stuff like that you don't want those things rusting down the road you don't want them something happening you want to go with the, something quality and that's what we kind of offer that's what we kind of stand behind is the quality stuff now we do have stuff that is you know, more budget friendly, such as like the BBK or the Stainless Power and stuff like that. So we do have those brands that are there as well. So if you're not something that you don't want something that cooks, you don't want the American Racing, understandable. BBK, Stainless Works, Stainless Power, they have stuff for you guys. So it's really kind of beneficial for you guys to kind of take a look. So, headers. Long tube headers, 2010, 2011, 20, 2010 to 2015. You guys, like I said, y'all had it easy. Y'all had all this stuff, you know, going on great. Now, a lot of the stuff you guys will see on our website is going to have the catted connection pipes, okay? Now, you'll see the long tube headers with catted connection pipes. Why don't you guys offer the non-catted? There's a lot of, a lot of laws that kind of went into effect, and we're honestly just kind of steering away from them because we don't want any problems. We want to make sure you get you, we get you got the guys the products you need that you're not going to have any problems with. So, that's why you'll see the catted connection pipes. Now... The thing about the catted connection pipes is that they are, obviously they are catted, so they will have a high flow material in here. Now, some of them are going to be the, the 200 cell count. Uh, I believe some of them are even 400. It just depends on the brand. Um, but most of them will look like this and have the same catted material inside that you see here. So that basically, that material filters out all the raw fuel smell that you guys get. So some of you guys that have a really smelly gas and maybe you're running a big cam and stuff like that and honestly you might be running the 
the non-catted pipes for a reason. Understandably so. But some of you guys that are out there, you're smelling that fuel, and if you're wondering why, it's probably because you have a non-catted pipe. So something to kind of pay attention to. So headers, okay, that's kind of that's kind of that. Okay, so headers, you have shorty and you have long tube. Let's go over a little bit about them. Shorty are going to basically connect right back to your factory location. Those are going to be a simple, easy upgrade for you guys that don't want to kind of get involved with a tune or anything like that. So that's something you want to pay attention to as well, the tune factor. Shorty headers are going to kind of get you guys away from that. You're going to basically bolt those on to your factory catalytic converter. And luckily enough, I have a factory cat back here. So your factory connection is essentially going to look like this. Okay, here's your factory connection. Now this is a heavy piece, okay guys? This thing is not light, it's all cast. Okay, it's big, it's heavy, it's bulky. You put this next to a set of stainless steel headers like Cooks, man, you're gonna obviously see the benefits behind a set of long tubes as compared to the factory cast manifolds. Now, the catalytic converters, you have your pre-cat, secondary cat. Now this is where the check engine light kind of comes in. On a long tube setter, a long tube header, basically the front O2 is relocated to somewhere back here. And then that makes your rear O2 relocated somewhere back here. And then you have your catalytic converter that sits between it. Now that's kind of what gets you guys involved with having to get a tune. Long tube header comes all the way down and you got to get that stuff all serviced. You got to get recalibrated so that way it, that oxygen sensor knows exactly what you did and how it's working. If not, you're just going to get a check engine light and the car might run a bit rich. So you might waste a little more gas if you don't run without the tune. So can you run without it? Yes, you can. Do I recommend doing it for a long time? Not so much. Not so much. So there's your factory setup, okay? Factory setup, and we'll kind of go over the long tube setup so that you guys can understand that a little bit better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set this over here. I'll put it back over here. I'm gonna put it back over there, and I'm gonna grab this Cook's header they had I have here. Now, <clears throat> now obviously, you guys are gonna want to kind of really pay attention to the material, and yes, a lot of the manufacturers use similar material. It's all stainless steel. Um, it, it, it's, I believe, I forget the thickness of the wall. It, it, it crosses my mind right now. But these are inch and seven eighths, also available in two inch. So if you guys are wanting maybe inch and seven eighths, you want two inch, you high horsepower guys, you might want to think about two inch. Maybe you're just adding boost and you need a little bit more airflow. Two inches is available as well. So these headers, okay. I'm gonna get you guys over here so I'm not holding this thing just in the air. Okay, so long tube headers. What you really wanna kind of pay attention to is a lot of these headers are basically tuned and you wanna understand why they're kind of tuned. Well, they're all kind of tuned in a way so that way they all perceive the correct firing order so that way the exhaust gases are all pushed out by the next one. So if number one is firing first, number one, three, five, and seven, okay, just for kind of reference, okay, that's not really the size. But one, three, five, and seven, if one fires first and then five is next, well, they want to make sure that this exhaust gas is at a number five, is not going to hit the pipe, the collector, before number one. So they want one number one to hit, then they want number five, then they want number three, then they want number seven. So that's how kind of how they work, that's how they kind of tune it, that's how they kind of get them built and have them made. Now, What's the difference between an inch and seven eighths and a two inch? Obviously, other than size, it's the primary tube right here. Two inch will allow a lot more airflow than a one and seven eighths. Is a one and seven eighths more beneficial than a two inch for you? Depends on the application. The application has a lot to do with what you guys are choosing headers. Okay, so a few guys, and I have it over here on my board, so Typically, inch and seven eighths, I like to suggest for guys that are making maybe about 750 to 800 rear wheel and under. Okay, inch and seven eighths, anything 800 rear wheel horsepower and under, you're good at inch and seven eighths. Anything over 800 rear wheel horsepower, I'd probably suggest a two inch because you are moving a lot more air. You got a big cam, you got big cylinder heads, you got everything kind of working and flowing. You need a lot of massive air to be moved. Maybe you got a sniper intake on the car going along with that Pro Charger or that Whipple. Who knows? Okay, so on builds like that, two inch is definitely something that you want to kind of look at because you are moving a lot more air that's designed to be moved by something that's a bigger primary tube. 
Now, can you guys with a thousand horsepower do it on inch and seven eighths? Yes, yes you can. Yeah, that's not really a problem. So you can get the inch and seven eighths and make, still make a thousand horsepower. Sure, no problem, no big deal. But you do also want that extra air to be moved because you might be living, leaving a little bit more power on the table as compared to the two inch. So that's where you kind of want to pay attention to. Now, how does it connect to your factory system? That's a question that always kind of comes up. 2010 to 2015 SS and ZL1 cars, those were easy, okay? A set of headers, a set of headers like I have on this car, connected right to the car, right to the factory exhaust, right to really any exhaust system. So you guys with 2010 to 2015 SS models and ZL1 models, when it comes to headers and mounting it back to your factory exhaust or an aftermarket exhaust that you might have, no problem. The connection point, honestly, realistically, is gonna be right about here, right about where your mirror is. That's gonna be your connection point, okay? And that's gonna be where this bad boy comes in. Okay, there's gonna be a reducer that usually comes with these. That reducer basically knocks it down so that way you guys connect to the factory system, which is two and a half inch. Now, these are three inch, so yes, you are necking down to the two and a half inch. A lot of guys think that's gonna restrict a whole lot. Unless you're making the 800 rear wheel, 1,000 horsepower, you're really, you're fine. Nothing's gonna be wrong with that reducing of that half inch. So, that connects basically to your factory system or your aftermarket system, and basically connects and slips into the, to the factory collar that's there. So, you have no problems mounting or doing anything like that. You have V6 guys, 2010, 2015, you have V6 guys, same story. You're not gonna have a problem mounting everything to the factory exhaust, whether you go with the down pipes or you go with the headers. Now remember, V6, 2010 to 2011 V6 have headers. 2012 to 2015, you guys have down pipes. Now Ricardo, why, 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 why do I have down pipes and these guys have headers? Well, long story short, GM in 2012 decided to upgrade the motor to the LFX instead of the LLT. And well, they integrated the exhaust manifold into the cylinder head. Great for performance, as far as factory and out of, out of the box. Great for performance, no problem. But it kind of left you guys a little, you know, you couldn't put the headers. You could put a downpipe. That's it. So that's the main reason why you have you 2012, 2015 V6 owners. That's why you guys have downpipes. Now, don't get me wrong. A downpipe is still going to benefit you. It might not benefit you as much as a header. But when I say as much, I'm probably talking about 10, 15 percent. 10, 15 percent when it you know, calculated over the horsepower is probably two or three. So is it really that much killing it that much uh, not so much but you v6 guys this is an example of a downpipe now this is the american racing that fits the 2016 to 2021 v6 models okay so this is the american racing downpipe i have something on the way for you guys so i know you guys have asked and trust me we're listening we're trying to get what we can and hey we're coming through so this is on its way for you guys you'll get sound clips and install and all stuff like that but no problem so the downpipe how does it benefit? Obviously, it's going to do the same thing as a header, except it's going to be one big tube here. Now, I want to say it's about a two and a half. So the V6, obviously, you're not moving as much air as a V8. But I want to say it's about a two and a half, two and a quarter pipe. I'm not really too 100% sure to look it up. Sorry. So basically, you have the exhaust gases that go through. And here's your catted connection. Here's your catted pipe. It's going to look very similar to this. Okay, very similar to this one right here. Okay, it was very similar to that on the inside of here. Obviously, it's really hard to kind of tell if it's actually there because you can't see through that. You're just going to see darkness as it goes into the into the turn here. That one, same thing. You're going to see darkness as it goes into the turn. But the downpipes, they are going to benefit you guys with the same way as a, a long tube header would. Okay, obviously, it's just going to be one primary tube. So, so unlike a long tube header, you're not going to have to worry about firing order since everything is going into one one port, okay, and these mount to the cylinder heads. So since everything is going into one port, then you don't have to worry about firing order and making sure everything's going out from there. Everything's gonna be pushed through, no problem, no big deal. Into the high flow cat to save you from getting that, those nasty raw fuel smells out of your exhaust, and then it connects to the exhaust system from there. So now with the six gen, I will admit, the six gen gar cars, now, mounting it to your factory exhaust or an aftermarket exhaust is a little difficult. Uh, not really so difficult, actually. Not 
difficult, but it does require a little bit more than the fifth gens where you just slap it on the clamp and we're done, we're going. So those guys, you guys, sixth gen guys, unfortunately, UV6, ZL1, SS guys, 1LE guys, all you guys, unfortunately, you gotta kinda have to cut the factory exhaust or any aftermarket exhaust system that you might have to fit the downpipe or the headers. Now, Ricardo, but I got mine to kind of slip together. Well, then your combination might be working together. Or what you might have done is gone with a manufacturer that creates both the exhaust system and the headers. Cooks, for example, they have their headers. So obviously, they're known for headers, not really known out there for the exhaust systems, but they do have exhaust systems that will bolt up to some of their header applications. So it's kind of something to think about. Anyways, going on from there, we kind of covered that. We covered that. I want to show you guys before we really go, going to go any further. I want to show you guys what I'm talking about when it comes to the header installations and and the fitment behind it, okay? So if I can get my camera guy over here. Now, we have our 2010 shop car, 2010 SS, okay? And we have the headers on it. And now on this car, I have stainless power, okay? Now, some of you guys that are wondering, how does it fit? How does it go together? Or, do I need any plug wires? Do I need this or that? I'm going to show you guys exactly what's going on going on here. Now, it's kind of the best, it's not the best view, but obviously, I'm going to be able to show you guys what's going on. So, if I can kind of get you guys looking down here, I can kind of point out some stuff. So, I have the headers on this car, okay? Now, they're the inch and seven eighths, okay? We want inch and seven eighths because we don't have a cam, we don't have an intake, we're nothing really special going on with cylinder heads or anything like that on this car. No problem, no big deal. So we have the inch and seven eighths headers on there. These are the stainless power. And as you guys can see, we kind of clear everything. Now, yeah, some things are a little close, okay? But that's why there's different protections. There's different uh, spark plug wires. You can go with the ceramic boots. You can go with the boot covers and stuff like that. And everything kind of will be protected and really kind of taken care of from there. Now, these are the Granatelli spark plug wires. So they are a little bit longer than a factory one. So that's why you kind of see them. They're a little curved. Turn them a little, little bit just so that way we make sure we're clearing everything and we're not gonna get hit. So, header installation, do you really have to worry about them hitting? Hey, Ricardo, I put a set of headers on my 2010 to 2015 and the steering shaft hits. I can most likely probably guess what brand header you went with if your steering shaft hits, okay? Now, I, I, I don't wanna pick on you and I don't wanna say you, you bought something wrong, but I can most likely guess, now the brands that we sell, the Cooks, the American Racing, the Stainless Power, the Stainless Works, uh, the BBK, uh, I'm probably missing a couple, but those brands that we offer, they clear, man. They clear, we, we haven't had one single problem in the years we've been doing this with any of their headers. Um, now, why? Why Why is that a factor? Well, quality quality checks is really kind of what goes into it. That's really where everything kind of plays into it, is it, the quality behind the product, behind the name that's stamped on the product. They want to make sure you're not going to have any problems. Now, all those manufacturers throughout the years, if they didn't physically put it on a 20, let's call it 2014, then they weren't going to say it fit because they wanted to make sure. Chevrolet likes to make some little changes here and there between models. We all know that. We've experienced it with the 2010 to 2015. Same thing with the 16 to 21. Little changes here and there. And sometimes those little changes can affect the header design. Manufacturers have gone back and redesigned the headers, just as Cooks, and they have the different connection points. They used to have a slip fit. Now they have a ball style, which is a torque clamp. Um, so it really just depends. But if you're hitting on any of these headers that I've put on, ZL1s, 1LEs, SSs, I've put all brands, all kinds on, I've never had a problem. So it, it's really one of those things, if you're really kind of wanting to maximize everything you got, pay attention to the brand you got, look them up a little bit. I'm not saying take my advice from it. Go look up some reviews, no problem. We have plenty of reviews on our website, go check them out. You know, you'll see all that stuff is perfect. So for you guys that, um, obviously don't have the V8. Um, and like I said, I don't have a V6 here and I wish I, wish I did. I, I'd love to show you guys. Wish I had a big enough room for all kinds of models here. But I have this little Turbo 4. Now, you Turbo 4 guys, right over to you. You 2016 to 2021 guys. You guys are gonna experience something similar to this, a downpipe. Now, it's obviously not gonna be as long because since it's a turbo application, the turbo kind of sits off to the side and gives you a little bit more room. So I'm gonna pull you guys in here Pull you guys in here because this car does have a downpipe, okay? Factory exhaust, okay? Factory exhaust. But if you guys are ever wanting to upgrade, get rid of the factory catalytic converter, 
if you saw earlier those big pieces of catalytic converter that that's just they're huge okay so kind of get you maybe maybe get you over here see how i can get the camera in here but this piece right here obviously we have our factory exhaust system heat shields and everything all that stuff is there and then this piece right here is the downpipe now same thing this is the catted version this is the one from mishimoto now why is it changing color well i mean there's a lot of heat that's coming off of this so it's just natural for the stainless to change color it's going to happen to long tubes it's going to happen to a downpipe they're not going to look that same way the entire life because of the heat that's where it comes in so okay you get this nice rainbow look anyways on the on the some of the welds kind of looks pretty cool i like it but that's your downpipe now this is a simple easy installation that we've done kind of before um, you have your connection points up top and then onto the factory exhaust system from here. Now, don't worry, we are going to be changing the, fact, the factory exhaust here pretty soon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, we'll get you some sound clips and videos and obviously installation stuff from there. Now, just for example here, you can see this big kind of open area. You V6 guys, you're going to kind of experience something similar, and this is obviously where your downpipe is going to sit. Now, I'm going to grab this, and this is just for reference, okay? This is just for reference. I know we got a turbo four in here, but... But if we take this downpipe, you're going to have it basically sit somewhere along right here. And that's where it's going to make all the connections and everything back here. Hopefully you can see that. So that's where all the connections are there. Okay. So hopefully that kind of answers you guys. And let me see. I'm going to see if I can get you guys pulled up here. I want to answer some questions. So let's see here. Get you guys pulled up here. Oh, what happened? So. A couple more things, a couple more things I have on my list to kind of go over. Okay, a couple more things I have on my list to kind of go over are the, the benefits behind like a, something that's ceramic coated or something that's natural finish. What's the difference? How come, uh, which one should I choose? Which one should I go with? It really depends. Okay, you can go with the natural finish. Now, these are going to be something that's natural finish. Okay, it's just a stainless color. Um, it's nothing special to it. Now, if you get it with something that's coated, then something that's ceramic coated is going to be beneficial if you're trying to keep underhood temperatures down. Okay, now, not all manufacturers offer ceramic coated, okay? Not all of them do, but if you're looking for something that is ceramic coated, you might want to take a look at BBK. BBK does have their ceramic coated headers that actually work out very well. Our 2016 SS that I have sitting outside, that one has BBK headers on it. Um, and so, yeah. That's what's kind of going on with that one. So if you're wanting something that's coated, it's something that's going to provide a little more benefit other than obviously the power, BBK, keep those underhood temperatures down and basically kind of go from there. Now, can you get these headers coated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're able to find a, a place, maybe a local place that does ceramic coating or maybe uh, you, you ship them off to a ceramic coater before, um, definitely you can get these ceramic coated and obviously benefit, reap the benefits from there. So something to kind of think about. Now, one of the last things one of the last things on my list is power and tune. How much power am I gonna get out of this? Is it beneficial for me to go ahead and put this on my car so I can reap the benefits behind it, obviously being the power? It depends, okay? Now, yes, you are gonna create more power because you're freeing up that, extra, that restrictive flow from the factory catalytic converter combination. Okay, the factory cast manifold and, and uh, catalytic combination sitting over there is obviously gonna be very restrictive as compared to something that is high flowing like this one. So how much power are you going to make? Oh, well, that really kind of depends on the application. And finally, your tune, because your tune does unlock a lot of the power that's supposed to be there or that comes with it. So going from there, how much power am I going to make on a downpipe? You'll probably pick up realistically 15 to 20 horsepower, somewhere around there. And now that's really kind of before the tune. Once you kind of get the tune dialed in and everything, the tune, downpipe combination, you're probably looking at 25 to 30, somewhere around there. Turbo 4, guys, how much power am I going to pick up on a downpipe? Downpipe, untuned, same thing. You're at about 15 to 20. So it just depends. Climate conditions play a factor into it, and really everything kind of goes from there. Tune and everything, all that. These cars are actually really detuned from the factory, so the fact that you're just putting a tune in it, even if it's a stock car, you're still going to make a decent amount of power. Now, a tune alone on this car, no downpipe, no exhaust, nothing. A tune alone on these cars, I see, I think are being reported at about 20 to 25. I've seen some guys say 40. I haven't really seen the 40 realistically. I'm saying 25 to 30 is more of a really realistic number. Now, you toss a downpipe onto that combination. Yeah, yeah, I can see you hitting that 40, 45 number. I can see that on a factory boosted car. Because like I said, 
these cars are very detuned from the factory. They're good, nice little machines. So, what about you SS guys? SS guys, same thing. You 16 to 20 guys, 16 to 21 guys, same thing. The power benefits behind a long tube header installation is probably going to be a little bit more at about 20 to 25. Okay, 20 to 25. You get the tune and everything dialed in, then yeah, you're at about 35. 40, somewhere around there. Obviously, it depends on the tuner and how much time in, how aggressive they might be. So you're probably seeing somewhere around that number. Now, you 5th gen guys. 5th gen's got a completely different story. LS3, whether, whether it be the LS3, the L99, hell, I'm even going to toss in the LSA, okay? You ZL1 guys. All you guys, you put a set of inch and 7 eighths or 2 inch headers, you're going to be anywhere from about 35 to 40. And with the tune, you're probably be about 45. You know, yeah, these, these cars, realistically, they, they pick up a lot of power on, on the header and tune combination. So that's what, these things love it. It's just the fifth gens, it's just the nature of the beast. The six gens, they did such a good job, actually, from, fact, from factory with a tri-wide header that they have on it already. It's a shorty header. But that tri-wide combination that they have on it already puts out a decent amount of power. So a long tube header really kind of has to work at it to get that power out. But... As you guys can see, that cast manifold sitting back there, getting rid of that, putting a set of long tubes on it, unlocks that power so much more than anything else. V6, guys, same thing. I'm going to go with the same numbers that I did with the 6th gen as far as UV6, guys, simply because it's going to be the downpipes and tunes that really kind of unlock everything. So headers or downpipe on a V6, you're probably looking at 15 to 20 realistically. By the time you get the tune and everything locked in, 25 to 30, somewhere around there. So... Those are kind of the power benefits and really everything behind a set of headers and downpipes, whether you have V6, V8, four cylinder, doesn't matter, man. We got you guys covered. We have something for everybody. Now, obviously, which way are you gonna go now? Now, it's just a matter of deciding do you wanna go two inch or as far as you long tube header guys, you wanna go two inch, you wanna go inch and seven eighths. Now, we already went over <laughs> the benefits behind each one, so kind of go ahead and take a look at that. But that's what I got for you guys on headers. Now let's see here. Ooh. Let's see here. Horsepower gains from a downpipe. Well, Dwayne, Dwayne, I kind of I answered that one. Hopefully, hopefully you you saw that. You you heard me. Let's see. Does downpipe on a turbo four change the exhaust note? And can you hear the turbo? Good question. That's a very good question. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna answer that question with a yes. Um, obviously, we have some videos on YouTube that have that downpipe and 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 everything you, you can kind of hear after we did the downpipe installation alone with the factory exhaust. So if you guys want to hear it, head over to our YouTube channel and check that out. But yes, you can hear the turbo whine a little bit more. You can hear it spool. Okay, it's not really whine. Sorry. You can hear it spool. Uh, whine supercharger application. Spool is turbo. Get that straight. Uh, so the spooling action you got to get out of the turbo, it does spool a lot faster. So are you, in essence, making more power? Potentially. Uh, potentially, yes, because you are getting a quicker spool action out of the turbo. So, uh, to answer your question, yes, you can hear the, it in the exhaust. Um, it's a little more raw, um, which is not bad. It's very tolerable. Uh, so, you can hear the exhaust note, and you can hear the, the turbo spool a little bit more to answer your questions. Yes. If I do a downpipe, do I have to get it retuned? If you already have a tune in the car, again, Dwayne, this is for, for you. If you already have a tune in the car, Yes, I would suggest having the tune re-looked at or at least readjusted to calibrate for that downpipe. Um, if you had the factory catalytic converter in there, then obviously those things are a little bit more restrictive as compared to the high flow versions. So yes, I would get that tune re-looked at. It might be just a simple update, one little map they have to change, done. So it could be something simple. They might not have to change anything at all, but I do suggest having it looked at just to make sure you are in the clear. Let's see here. Last question, do you all have headers for my 24 valve coming swap third gen? Dwayne, you're a funny guy. Funny guy, maybe, maybe we could have something. We could have something, who knows? You know, we know a few fabricators, we know a few guys out there. Uh, so, but anyways, <laughs> thanks for, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully I answered all your questions. I know there was a lot to cover here in what the 30 minutes we kind of been doing this 30 minutes we kind of been doing this and really kind of going from there. But thanks. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate all the questions, uh, obviously all the time. If you guys have any other questions about headers, downpipes, maybe something I didn't answer now, our sales guys can answer it. Our support guys can answer it. Shoot us a message. I'll go ahead and answer you from there. 
Um, however, you guys can kind of get a hold of us. We're more than happy to answer any of your questions that we can. Um, headers, downpipes, turbo, V6, V8. We got you guys covered. Even all you guys, even, you know, even you Z28 guys, because I'll be honest, this is Z28 header. You know how I know? That right there. The flange. Flange right there is the D pipe instead of the standard oval. So.